brought up uh, three items uh, just now from the 90-foot ledge at Little Salt Spring. And these have undoubtedly been underwater for nine or 10,000 years. Ledge contains sediments that uh, were dry, but um, going to be permanently submerged by the rising world ocean level uh, right about that time. So they are a very hackneyed phrase, but uh, they do represent a, this deposit at 90 feet represents a time capsule. Uh, it has not been disturbed at all until we came along and excavated this uh, as carefully as we could. Uh, we are uh, very confident that we have some items here that uh, are going to tell us something about the what's called the paleo environment. In other words, Florida's environment at the end of the last ice age was substantially different than it is today. Uh, this is a portion of a lower jawbone from a uh, immature uh, white-tailed deer. Deer are very common in Florida even today, and they were here uh, at the end of the last ice age as well. So this particular deer was obviously not diving down to 90 feet. Uh, it may have fallen into the hole when the, when the water level was 90 feet below its present position and swum around trying to get out and finally made it to the ledge and then um, died. This item, which is very interesting, this is a piece of wood. Uh, don't know what type yet, but we have a person who can identify this, of course. And um, this is a very uh, non-natural shape. Um, I wouldn't go quite as far as to say it's an artifact yet, but after we clean it up a little bit and look at it under a microscope, uh, it may in fact show some little marks, uh, shavings made by a stone tool, which would indicate that it is in fact uh, artificially modified, therefore it's an artifact. The interesting thing about this piece is that it has a pencil point on it, and that's not usually the case with the branches that we find, so it looks to me like uh, it may have been, as if it may have been sharpened by people. We'll have to take a very close look at it under a low power microscope to see, but um, it is a non-natural looking piece of wood. We have not found, you might wonder about stone tools, we actually haven't found very many stone tools and it would be nice if we, if we had, but we haven't. There just wasn't very much good stone in Florida to make uh, tools, so the uh, especially these early people, the Paleo-Indians, would use uh, a lot of wood and um, shell occasionally and bone to make their tools. And I think there's a pretty good chance that we would find um, more definitive tr traces of human activity. Again, the reason, that we're, the reason that we're doing this at all is that this would have been a kind of an oasis at the end of the last ice age and there was hardly any fresh water in Florida, and so uh, it, this would have attracted uh, all kinds of animals to the fresh water, and of course people would have been attracted to the animals and the fresh water. The, the unique aspects of Little Salt Spring are that it is um, a sinkhole, this uh, hourglass shaped feature, and it also has water flowing out of it, so it's a flowing spring, and the water that's flowing out is coming from thousands of feet deep in the, uh, under the Earth's crust. It's been underground for so long that it has no dissolved oxygen in it. It's anoxic, so that there is, uh, you would not normally find a piece of wood that is ten, nine or 10,000 years old because it would have decomposed. But this has survived because the water has no bacteria, basically. And we've known this for 30 years, but we haven't really been able to capitalize on the fact because of funding problems and so forth. But this is an absolutely unique underwater archaeological, prehistoric underwater archaeological site.